What would you say back to those people? It's usually the paleo people that say we should eat like our ancestors, putting focus on the hunter and not the gathering part. Uh, they're either ignorant or liars. Absolutely. One or the other. There's, yeah. all, there's no in-between ground. They're either ignorant or they're lying. Because the research says the opposite. Yeah. The research, I just gave you some current research, but we can go back to uh, 44,000 years ago and look at the Neanderthals. Yep. The Neanderthals, uh, their skeletons have examined uh, all throughout Europe, and what you find is starch granules in between their teeth. These were starch, even Neanderthals, which are supposed to be the meanest, baddest hunter of the hunter gatherers they ever were. They were starch eaters. You can look at uh, paleo people from three different areas of Western Europe. And what you'll find, this was from 30,000 years ago, you'll find starch was a, the primary source of calories. Uh, you can go back 105,000 years ago to Mozambique in Eastern Africa, and you can see evidence of starch eating. Uh, it's just They're just plain and simple lying about the research and now they are lying. I know they're lying. Are they lying? Well, I don't know what they're doing right now because not only myself, but many other respected anthropologists, um, evolutionary biologic anthropologists have stood up and said, you guys got it wrong. You're absolutely wrong. And the research is absolutely clear that they're wrong. So if they're still telling that story, there's only two choices. Uh, you know, their, their eyes and ears are closed. <laughs> Their brain is numb, maybe from eating all that meat, or they're lying. You know, there's nothing in between, folks. Yeah, and if we want to keep people trim and healthy and lacing up and getting out there playing sports, you know, you're not going to do that on meat and dairy. You're going to do it on carbohydrates. Right. All long-distance winners eat a high-carbohydrate diet. They call it carbohydrate loading. But, yeah, long-distance runners, uh, bicyclists. They live on high-carb diets. That's where you get your endurance. The winners do. The losers, you know, they can eat anything they want. But the winners always eat high-carb diets. Starch, it's starch-based. <clears throat> I want to get away from that term carbohydrate because that confuses people. It's just like the dairy and the meat industry. They purposefully uh, 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 demand that government policies like uh, the, like the uh, dietary guidelines for Americans that are published every five years – they uh, require <clears throat> that these documents, when they talk about the harmful effects of food, do not talk about dairy and meat. Instead, they say saturated fat. Yeah. And the public doesn't know what saturated fat is. Saturated fat is meat, dairy, and eggs. But they won't let them use those words because it might cause Americans to take action. So stop talking about saturated fat and cholesterol. Start talking about meat, dairy, and eggs. Stop talking about carbohydrate and complex carbohydrate. You wouldn't be able to find a carbohydrate. But you could sure find a potato, and you could sure find rice. Yep. Uh, you can sure find starch. So we have to change our terminology back to practical terms so the public has a chance to act. And so every time you say carbohydrate, I'll probably uh, introduce that correction not to be unkind, but because we must start focusing on our minds uh, with words that allow us to take action. And right now the words have prevented action from being taken because they're uh, – they're not relevant. They're not. Uh, they're not practical. Uh, you never eat a fat, carb, or a carbohydrate, or you do, but you, you, you not in in that kind of terminology. You can't grow these things in your garden, but you can grow potatoes, rice, corn, etc. And so we need to get that kind of verbiage back into the into the public discussions.